Hello everybody, Anthony Aniano here from Rotoballer Radio and rotoballer.com with a look at the week four fantasy baseball waiver wires. Hitters you may want to add for the week beginning Monday, April 17th. Don't forget everybody, head over to rotoballer.com right now, sign up today. Premium pass gets you all sorts of great content, including our lineup lineup optimizers, team sync tools, and everything else you're looking for. Courtesy of Rotoballer.com, including waiver wire, trade uh, trade advice, whatever it is you need to succeed in your 2023 fantasy baseball season. Give me a follow on Twitter, at Aniano Fantasy. So let's take a look at some hitters available on that waiver wire. And we've been beat up by injury since we last spoke. Seth Brown, Adam Duvall, and then the shortstop position, right? Tim Anderson, O'Neal Cruz. Corey Seager, Carlos Correa, no injured list at this moment, but he has missed the last couple of days. Full disclosure, by the way, recording this on Thursday, April 13th, before the game start for the day. You're probably watching it over the course of the weekend, getting ready for Monday the 17th. So some things can change, obviously, between now and then, whether it be injury or some of the stats I throw at you. Also, uh, using Yahoo as our roster percentage point, trying to keep all players uh, available in 50% or less league. So let's start in the outfield. A couple of players I like that are available. First one, and my favorite player of the week, my premium ad of the week, even though he's kind of platooning, but he's a left-handed hitted outfielder, so he's on the strong side of that platoon, and that's Josh Lowe of the Tampa Bay Rays. Former first-round pick of the Rays in 2016, and let's just be honest. If we could buy into any part of the Tampa Bay Rays, you have to do it right now. Let's just acknowledge what that is. The best team in baseball. Only 10% rostered on Yahoo right now, hitting 385 on the early portion of the season with a 429 on base percentage. Flashing a little power with two home runs, has a stolen base, and has the highest OPS of anybody I'm going to mention today at 1.198, hitting 7th or 8th. In that Tampa Bay outfield, remember last year he came up, everybody was excited, he struggled early. But this was a guy in 2021 at AAA who had 22 homers and had 26 stolen bases. Last season, 2022 in AAA, 14 homers, 25 stolen bases. Stalled at the big league level last year for his first cup of coffee. Not stalling this time. Now he's going to sit against lefties potentially, especially tough lefties. But that is still the, the strong side of any platoon. Josh Lowe is my number one ad. If you just need general help in offense, power-speed combination, six RBIs, five runs scored, 20 stolen base potential with double-digit power production in the line as well. At number two, another outfielder who's available, Chaz McCormick of the Houston Astros. 24% rostered, was batting near the bottom of that Astros lineup, but is now slid up to the leadoff spot. And in that lineup, that means a lot of of runs scored he's already got seven runs scored and nine rbis on the season two homers and four stolen bases on pace for a nice double double year those four stolen bases match a career high for Chaz mccormick so just understand right and we've been predicting this with the changes in the game we're going to see more speed and you have guys like Chaz mccormick like brandon nemo of the mets who have already matched Highs in stolen bases in a season, and we're not even, where are we? We're on April 13th. We're about 13 games into the year. McCormick is hitting 275 with a 370 on base percentage to go along with those two home runs and four stolen bases. He's hit 14 home runs each of the last two seasons, and he is a lifetime 250 hitter. Also available at the outfield position, Baltimore Orioles outfielder Austin Hayes. 41% 41% rostered. McCormick, by the way, 24% rostered, if I failed to mention that. Austin Hayes, 41% rostered. The highest rostered player on my list today. He's currently hitting 302. He's a lifetime 259 hitter with a 348 on base percentage and a 976 OPS. The second highest OPS of anybody on the list today, just behind Josh Lowe. Three homers, 10 runs scored, six RBIs, and he's even stolen a base hitting fifth in that Baltimore lineup. Last season, 2022, he hit 16 home runs and drove in 60. 2021, 
22 home runs, 71 RBIs. So he's shown the ability to give you at least 15 to 20 homers and drive in some runs if you need outfield depth, maybe for the Adam Duvall or Seth Brown injury. Now, if you need middle infield help and you've been beat up by some of these shortstop injuries, my top shortstop ad is Gio Urshela of the Los Angeles Angels. Shortstop and third base eligible off to a terrific start. He's only 17% rostered. He's currently hitting 341 on the season with a 370 on base percentage. One stolen base, no home runs yet at this point. Eight runs scored, hitting seventh in that Angels lineup. One thing about Urshela is he's just been a consistent hitter. He's not flashy. He's not sexy. You're not going to be wowed by this. But when you look at the back of the baseball card, there's a level of consistency there. 2019, he hit 314. 2020, uh, 2021, he hit 267. Last season with Minnesota, he hit 285. He's hit at least 13 home runs in all three of those seasons. It's not fun. It's not flashy. You're not excited about it. But if you lost uh, Seager, if you lost Cruz, if you lost Tim Anderson, whatever it may be, you're looking to plug in and get consistent numbers, Gio Scheller of the Angels is the player to potentially give you that good batting average, a little bit of pop, some runs scored because of that Angels lineup, and he's only 17 percent rostered my final edition and it's a risky edition because we're not sure how playing time is going to shake out is with the minnesota twins rookie second baseman edward julian okay eight percent rostered he has as of the recording one game yesterday wednesday went 0 for 2 and hit eighth in that twins lineup now at the triple a level last season 300 batting average, a 441 on base percentage, 17 homers, and 19 stolen bases. A 19% walk rate and a 24% strikeout rate. Terrific minor league numbers last year. Gets the call, gets the promotion. But obviously, with anybody like this, there's concerns. How much does he play? Look at Francisco Alvarez, and now that personally bit me. I thought if they brought him up, they would play him. That's not been the case for the Mets. So how much does Julian play for the Minnesota Twins, how long does he stay up? These are all questions. If you have a roster spot that you can stash somebody on Yahoo, where they, I know they have the NA spots, though. Edward Julian, worth the addition. Little power, little speed, terrific on-base percentage guy. And if he does get demoted, you can potentially hold on to him. Okay, those are my top five pl- uh, ads of the week. One more, a bonus play, an ad, a minor league Add and hold, staying with my Mets. Okay, Brett Beatty of the New York Mets. And I say this really because A, the team is struggling offensively, and B, their current third baseman, Eduardo Escobar, has been flat out terrible. Escobar is hitting a measly 103 at the time of this recording. Brett Beatty is the 52nd ranked prospect in all of baseball. He is the Mets' third overall prospect. Third baseman has improved defensively significantly. He's 23% rostered already on Yahoo. So when he gets the call, unlike other players, if he gets the call, he's playing third base for the Mets because Escobar's done nothing to hold on to that job. Escobar is a, a veteran presence. He's liked in the clubhouse. Nice utility player if you need him. But right now can no longer be the Mets third baseman for much longer. Brett Beatty currently at AAA. Is hitting 333 with a 455 on base percentage, three homers, seven RBIs, and two stolen bases. Not a matter of if, just a matter of when, until Brett Beatty gets promoted and get, is given the Mets' third base job. Like I said, already 23% rostered, so people are thinking like me already. Get him now, avoid overspending in fab, and then be able to utilize him maybe as a corner infielder when he does get promoted. So to review... My top five ads at uh, top five hitter ads for week four, the week beginning Monday, April 17th. Number one, Josh Lowe. Number two, Chaz McCormick. Number three, Austin Hayes. Four, Gio Urshela. Number five, Edward Julien. And the bonus ad, the stash and hold, Brett Beatty of the New York Mets. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been fun as always, and we'll see you next time right here on Roto Baller Radio.